Well, finally, next time you're out cutting the grass on your nice riding mower, try to imagine what it was like many years ago cutting fields of grass by hand. Well, believe it or not, some people still do it that way. And as Rob Wiles is about to show us, the ancient tool of their labor is made right in Tracy City. Amy and Alan Wilson are headed into work at a place where work's been going on for more than a century, the Marug Company in Tracy City. Amy and Alan own the place, but this company's been making tools, particularly scythes, since before either Amy or Alan were gleams in anybody's eyes, since Swiss colonists came to this area in 1873. There was a need for scythes, which is what Murad Company makes, because when the immigrants came here, that's what they were used to mowing with. Uh, that's what they were used to using. And so there was a need, and the Murad family found that they could fulfill that need. Okay, but who needs a scythe today? Well, one character comes to mind. The Grim Reaper, you know. Um, Grim Reaper is not going to kill you with a scythe. <laughs> so it's not an effective killing tool. So that's good to know. <laughs> yes, that's good to know, all right. Lots of folks have non-lethal uses in mind. The non-electric communities, meaning the Amish. There are a lot of the Amish uh, who buy our products but they don't necessarily buy them directly through us anymore. They buy them through our wholesalers. Um, we definitely support the Amish in Ohio, and there's also the Mennonites, the Shakers, the Quakers. Um, they love our product. We also have the, I guess, the alternative lifestyle people, um, as you could call them, hippies, that are mainly out west right now. For those people, the Marug Company is the place for a scythe. Alan says part of that comes from the care that's taken in making the tools. We usually get, you know, 14 to 8 inch logs. We'll go down to a um, local log yard and um, pick them out, and I try to read the log for twists in the grain and uh, knots, because the more knots, the more waste we have. So but, you, what are you looking for? What kind of wood do you use and what are you really looking um, for? Either shag, um, shag bark or pig nut hickory. All of our stuff's made out of hickory. It's, um, aside from locust, it's the hardest wood around. So they're, we can make a smaller handle and it's light, but it's still indestructible, basically. Each side is custom fit to its owner and then each component handmade. Cut, rip them down to an inch and a quarter, and then work them up from there on the table saw, uh, ripping them down to inch and a uh, half, and then we plane them down to inch and a quarter so we have smooth sides that we're working with because the steaming process raises the grain. So making all the finished edges really minimizes the sanding. All the wooden pieces are made right here. The blades come from Austria, but they are definitely Marug blades. When you leave with your new scythe, you're gonna know it's a handmade work of art. But you might think, I don't know, it might be kinda, kinda hard to wield one of these things. But Amy says you can do it. Amy and Alan are happy to show off their tools like they did at a recent festival. It's a very efficient tool. It does not require gasoline, it doesn't require, you know, uh, any sort of engine maintenance, it runs off breakfast. And so that's kind of the best thing about it is if you've had your breakfast that morning, it's going to start. So <laughs> it's incredibly efficient. When you're using a scythe, you know, you're upright the whole time, your back doesn't get, it's all in the hips, it just requires a, a swinging motion and physics, you know, inertia. So as long as you can do that, you're good. And you're good for a long time because of the design of the scythe. You can tell Amy and Alan believe in their company, oh, and you wonder how they decided to get into the scythe business a few years ago, okay. especially taking over a company that's been in business for so long. Well, that's really part of the reason. 
The rug is, it has so much history to it and it's so important to this area. And I get so much pride because I'm from this area. I'm, I'm from the mountain, I was born here, I was raised here. Um, I can trace my family back here. And being able to, to have this business, keep the doors open, keep people interested, it's, it's like a wildest dream come true. This is what I've always wanted to do, but never thought it would happen. Which gives Amy and Alan not only pride, but a link to the past, their past, and to generations past, who when they needed a high quality scythe, came to this very place, the Marug Company in Tracy City.